The U.S. government has sanctioned three rebel leaders accused of fomenting political instability, conflicts and civilian displacement in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mohamed Yusuf reports. The U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control on Thursday imposed sanctions on Koniel Nanga, leader of the Congo River Alliance. The rebel group is accused of seeking to overthrow the government and driving political instability in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Nanga was previously targeted with sanctions in 2019. Washington also sanctioned Patrand Bisemwa, the leader of the M23 movement rebel group, for destabilization and human rights violations. Charles Semetama, deputy military leader of another rebel group, Tuirwaniho, was also sanctioned. Great Lakes Region political researcher and analyst Ntanyoma Rukumbuzi says the U.S. is trying to show that it cares about the DRC and wants to punish those who want to create instability in the Central African nation. The U.S. Um, wants to convince the Congolese general audience that they are standing uh, with them, uh, that are they are paying attention on what's happening um, in DRC, uh, that they can still do something to um, push or force the rebel group to stop fighting. As you can see, some of these sanctions seem to disregard and overlook the, the, the entire complexity of violence in Eastern DRC. The U.S. government said in a statement the action it is taking reinforces its commitment to hold accountable those who seek to perpetuate instability, violence and harm to civilians to achieve their political goals. The M23 as a group is also under U.S. sanctions. For several years it has been fighting against the Congolese army and other rebel groups in the east of the country. According to the UN, estimates more than 7.2 million Congolese are displaced due to conflicts. Olivier Baniboneba is a Congolese refugee living in Uganda. He says U.S. sanctions won't end the suffering of the Congolese. He says we are not in politics, but says the rebels are coming to my home to cut me with a machete. Even that Nanga, the American government says it will freeze his assets, but there is a country that is supporting Nanga. He says that country has the money, it will continue to fund him, and the killing goes on. The Congolese government has accused Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebel group, a claim denied by Kigali. Rukumbuzi also says the sanctions won't stop the operations of the rebel groups. Uh, they've been fighting for several reasons. Uh, there are different individuals and groups uh, who, who are, have something to fight for. Uh, I'm sure it may disturb them uh, at the time they be trying to understand why this uh, and possibly trying to um, take the way uh, roles can be dispatched to different individuals. Um, this won't stop the, the rebels to fight. The U.S. hopes the sanctions against these leaders and groups will change their violent ways and convince them to find a peaceful means to address their grievances instead of killing and displacing innocent people from their homes. Mohamed Yusuf, VOA News, Nairobi. Former Kenyan Prime Minister Lyle Odinga has come under heavy criticism from civil society groups and some opposition parties for appearing to prop up President William Ruto's government amid a youth-led uprising pushing for the latter's resignation. Mr. Odinga, who is a candidate for the African Union Commission chairmanship in February 2025, is believed to have negotiated a deal that saw four members of his ODM party take up key positions, including that of finance minister in President Ruto's reconstituted cabinet this week. The move has triggered a fallout in the opposition Azimio coalition, which backed Mr. Odinga's unsuccessful presidential bid in the 2022 elections. 
Three key political parties in the Koa region, including Wipa Democratic Movement of former Vice President Kalonzo Musioka, have disowned the deal, terming it a betrayal of the Gen Z movement behind the widespread protest across the country in the past one month. The wrangling of ODM members joining the cabinet is set to further weaken the opposition in parliament, where President Ruto already enjoys control after ruling more than 30 defectors to the government side. With 83 members of parliament, ODM boosted half of Azimio's parliamentary group before the defections. President Ruto is also betting on the inclusion of ODM's senior officials in cabinet to decrease the momentum of the protests with, especially in Nairobi and major towns like Mombasa and Kisumu where Mr. Odinga's party has a huge following. It is not clear if the relatively low-key protest staged by civil society groups in Nairobi on Thursday had anything to do with Ruto's unveiling of his so-called broad-based government the previous day. Mr. Odinga has since denied the existence of a formal power-sharing deal between his party and the, and the president's ruling Kenya Kwanza Kwa region, insisting the four ODM members agreed to join the cabinet in their individual capacities. In a statement issued by his campaign secretariat on Thursday, Mr. Odinga sought to clarify that his party was still pushing for a conditional national dialogue to address some of the concerns raised by the Gen Z movement behind the widespread protests across the country in the past one month.